It's time to go see the execution. Okay. Get over here. I'm innocent. Get over here. I'm innocent, I tell you. Get on the ground. Get her on the ground. Mr. Robespierre, we are one of the people who are trying to start a counter-revolution in Paris. What do you think we should do? Find them and destroy them. Uh, I'd like to buy a bottle of cologne, please. What is this garbage? You need... The required money is now a science. What are science? These. Stupid. Hello, my good people. I've brought you here today. You suck! I've tried to stop this radical movement. <laughs> Who did that? I heard what you said about my revolution. See you in court, traitors! I find the defendant guilty and sentence him to death via executioner. <laughs> The people will tear my enemies into pieces within three months. Come here. Above all, don't forget to show my head to the people. It's well worth having a look at. Does anyone else have anything to say? I do. The rear terror needs to stop. You're killing many innocent people. It's time to tell the whole truth. One man alone is paralyzing the Union. And that is Robespierre. Come here. Down on the ground. peaceable reign of the constitutional laws. We must end the war of liberty against tyranny and pass safely across the storms of the revolution. Sh such is the aim of the revolutionary system that you have enacted. Your conduct, then, ought also to be regulated by the stormy circumstances in which the republic is placed, and the plan of your administration must result from the spirit of the revolutionary go government combined with the general principles of democracy. Now, what is the fundamental principle of the democratic or pop popular government that is, the essential spring which makes it move? It is virtue. I am speaking of the public virtue which affected so many prodigies in Greece and Rome and which ought to produce much more surprising ones in the Republic in France. Of that virtue which is nothing other than love of the country and its laws. But as the essence of the Republic of the, or of democracy is equality, it follows that the love of country necessarily includes the love of equality. It is also true that this sublime sentiment assumes a preference for the public interest over every particular interest. Hence the love of country presupposes or produces all the virtues. 
for what they are other than the spiritual strength which renders one capable of those sacrifices? And how could the slave of avarice or ambition, for example, sacrifice his idol to his country? Not only is virtue the soul of democracy, it can exist only in that government. Republican virtue can be considered in relation to the people and in relation to the government. It is necessary in both. When only the government lacks virtue, there remains a resource in the people's virtue. But when the people itself is corrupted, liberty is already lost. But when, by prodigious efforts of courage and reason, the people breaks the change of despotism to make them into trophies of liberty, when, by the force of its moral temper, it comes, as it were, out of the arms of the death, to recapture all the vigor of the youth, when, if by turns, it is sensitive and proud, intrepid and docile, and can be stopped neither by impregnable ramparts nor by the innumerable amies of the tyrants armed against it, but stops of itself upon confronting the lawless image. Then, if it does not climb rapidly to the summit of its destinies, this can only be the fault of those who govern it. From all this, let us deduce a great truth. The characteristic of popular government is confidence in the people and severity towards itself. The whole development of our theory would end here if you had only to pilot the vessel of the republic through calm waters, but the tempest roars and the revolution imposes on another task. This great purity of the French Revolution's basis, the very sublimity of its objective, is precisely what causes both our strength and our weakness. Our strength because it gives us truth's ascendancy over imposture and the rights of the public interest over private interest. Our weakness because it rallies all vicious men against us, all those who are who in our hearts contemplated despoiling the people and all those who intend to let it be despoiled with impunity. Both those who have rejected freedom as a personal calamity and those who have embraced the revolution as a career of the public is prey. Hence the defection of so many ambitious or greedy men who since the point of departure have abandoned us along the way because they did not begin the journey with the same destination in view. The two opposing spirits that have been represented in the struggle to rule nature might be said to be fighting in this great period of human history to fix irrevocably the world's destinies, and France is the scene of this fearful combat. Without all the tyrants encircle you, within all tyrannies friends conspire, they will conspire until hope is wrestled from crime. We must smother the internal and external enemies of the Republic or perish with it. Now in this situation, the first maxim of your policy ought to be the lead to lead the people by reason and the people's enemies by terror. If the spring of popular government in time of peace is virtue, the springs of popular government in revolution are at once virtue and terror. Virtue without which terror is fatal, terror without which virtue is powerless. Terror is nothing other than justice, prompt, severe, inflexible. It is therefore an emanation of virtue. It is not so much a special principle as it is a consequence of the general public of democracy applied to our country's most urgent needs. It has been said that terror is the principle of a despotic government. Does your government therefore resemble despotism? Yes, as the sword that gleams in the hands of the heroes of liberty resembles that with which the henchmen of tyranny are armed. Let the despot governed by tire terror is brutalized subject. He is right as a despot. Subdue by terror the his the enemies of liberty, and you will be right, as founders of the republic. The government of the revolution is liberty's despotism against tyranny. It is force made only to protect crime, and is the thunderbolt not destined to strike the heads of the proud? Indulgence for the royalists. Cry certain men. Mercy for the villains. No mercy for the innocent. Mercy for the weak. Mercy for the unfortunate. Mercy for humanity. Society owes protection only to peaceable citizens. The only citizens in the republic are the republicans. For it, the royalists and conspirators are only strangers, or rather enemies. The terrible war waged by liberty against tyranny is it not indivisible? Are the enemies within not the allies of the enemies without? Assassins who tear our country apart, the intriguers who buy the consciences that hold the people's mandate, the traitors who sell them, mercenary pamphleteers hired to dishonor the people's cause, to kill public virtue, to steer up the fire of dis civil discord, to prepare political counter-revolution by moral counter-revolution are all those men less guilty or less dangerous than the tyrants whom they serve. Western save rocks. <laughs> 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 we should put that